Hello, Tri-Cities. Welcome to the 2021 Vote for Business Candidate Forum, the only region-wide business-focused candidate forum in the Tri-Cities, brought to you by the Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce. In this forum, you'll be hearing from Richland Mayor Pro Tem, Sandra Kent. She is running for Richland City Council position three at large. Her opponent, Larry Stanley, declined the invitation to participate today. I'm Scott Stovall, news anchor with Keeper Action News. I'm certainly pleased to be with you. Voting begins as ballots start appearing in mailboxes on October 13th and will continue through Election Day on Tuesday, November 2nd. Thank you so much for joining us to learn about Sandra Kent's thoughts and positions on issues that impact our local economy and business community. And now a message from the president and CEO of the Tri-City Regional Chamber of Commerce, Lori Matson. Thank you. I'd like to take a brief moment to thank the Chamber's Board of Directors and our Local Government Affairs Committee for their leadership in supporting the advocacy efforts of the Regional Chamber, and especially our sponsors, AYB Drafting, Cascade Natural Gas, and Hayden Homes. The Chamber supports positions that preserve and promote a positive business climate. As the foremost advocate and voice for business, the Chamber leads the region by advancing policies and positions that strengthen business and improve the local economy and quality of life. The 2021 Vote for Business Candidate Forum is designed to highlight how candidate positions integrate with local business priorities. And finally, a very special thank you to our local news partners for collaborating on this project. Your time, talent, and expertise are valued and truly appreciated. Now a word from one of our sponsors. Hello, I'm Lindsay Demko with Cascade Natural Gas. We are a proud sponsor of the Vote for Business campaign. Local elections are important to our business economy, just like our vital underground utility lines. So please, Remember to vote and always contact 811 before you dig. Thanks for watching. All right, thank you. And it is a pleasure for Keeper to support this effort to inform voters about the people who are running for office. Now to the format, opening and closing statements are limited to one minute. Response time for each question is limited to two minutes. Time limit reminders will appear on screen at 10 seconds remaining and, if necessary, when time is up. We're ready to get started. Let's begin by introducing Richland City Council member Sandra Kent. Welcome, Sandra, and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. And we appreciate you being here today. So if you're ready, let's get started. And we'll begin with your opening statement. You have one minute for that. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. And before I forget, thank you to both the um, Chamber as well as Keeper TV for supporting this activity. Um, my name is Sandra Kent. I'm currently the Mayor Pro Tem for the City of Richland. Um, I was originally appointed to the Richland City Council um, just over a decade ago. Um, and uh, it was not part of my, my life's journey to necessarily become an elected official. But what happened was that I participated in Leadership Tri-Cities, and I was encouraged through that process to make application. And then I've been on council since, and I have run for re-election several times. Um, I have a passion for, for community service. I love this community. And um, it is absolutely awesome to be in a position to help make policy that really makes a positive difference to people um, in the Tri-Cities and our community. All right. Thanks a lot, Sandra. So let's move right into the question and answer portion of the form. Here's question number one. What can the city council do in regard to tax and regulation that will promote our region as a smart place to do business? That's a great question, Scott. Um, as many people may know from looking at recent council videos, um, council member Christensen um, wants to, you know, pass something to make it clear that, you know, we're not going to impose a, a city income tax. And, you know, I think that's good because that helps make the Tri-Cities attractive as a place to live. 
um, as some of our uh, business owners and community leaders know, we're under some state restrictions associated with the kinds of incentives that we can offer here in Richland in order to attract business. And so that makes it somewhat difficult for us to be as competitive as other regions in attracting business. But what we can do is um, modify, update, upgrade, some of our regulations so that when we capture attention from businesses, we make the community environment and the business infrastructure friendly. And it's everything from um, taking additional efforts to make sure that our roads are well maintained and we have excellent connectivity and mobility, um, not passing unnecessary regulation that um, from a municipal perspective, um, taxes business because they do business here. Um, also, um, increasing um, housing stock so that, um, for example, apparently Amazon is coming. They're hiring more than a thousand people. And uh, we want those people to hopefully live in Richland, but if not in Richland, elsewhere in the Tri Cities. And that means that we need more affordable housing. Um, also, it means that we need to do um, more with respect to not only educational opportunities for their children, um, if they're bringing any, but also activities that they can enjoy in the evenings to uh, basically improve their quality of life. All right. Thanks a lot, Sandra. Here's the second question. The current labor shortage impacts local business as a city council member. What can you do to foster, attract, and retain talent to build the next generation workforce? It's a multifaceted approach in Richland. Um, we have some wonderful programs that are hosted both in our community center as well as our um, library facility where um, we have activities to encourage um, science and technology knowledge such as our STEAM programs. We also have a number of um, educational opportunities um, for people to, for example, improve their language skills, improve their presentation skills. We're, we also partner with a lot of the educational institutions in town, not only our elementary and um, mid and high schools, but also um, our university partners, Columbia Basin, as well as Washington State University in order to um, you know, help them encourage others to you know, continue to be degree seeking or to increase their skills. Um, you know, I think that is a key component to um, making sure that um, we're both growing talent as well as attracting talent and also that middle component of assisting individuals who may be in one job who would like to do something different for, for their own personal reasons. And they have an opportunity to um, attain that professional development here in the Tri-Cities versus having to make the choice to move. Okay, great. And also as a city council member, what specific investments by the city will you champion to encourage diversity of business and economic growth in Richland? It's, it is similar to the last question. It's very multifaceted. Um, you know, for Richland, it's important to ensure that we're being even handed and, and fair with respect to quote unquote, north, south and the middle because we're somewhat spread out geographically. And sometimes, you know, there is criticism from, from the public regarding, you know, more investments in the North versus the South, you know, those types of things. And we're growing both at both ends as well as to the West for Badger. And so I think that's an important component to make sure that as we work with city staff on strategic planning and the things that we do in order to plan for capital infrastructure, that um, you know we're having even growth economically and also from a residential perspective. Um, additionally, um, you know I think city staff does an excellent job with respect to um, grant applications and looking for you know that additional money so that your taxpayer dollars are being leveraged to get more dollar for dollar. 
And, um, you know, I think we do a great job in making sure that in all of our different component programs, we're both delivering services and capital improvements in Richland, that um, we have a lot of energy, you know, spread across the, those different areas, which is, you know, a, a different way to look at diversity versus, you know, the, the more traditional people component where um, we're very conscious of trying to make sure that we're bringing in a variety of programming, both in our um, community center, as well in, as in our library facility, so that you know we're just not focusing on the, the young versus the old, we're just not focusing on a particular demographic group or you know, a particular subject matter um, and, uh, in those are the, the things that we do in order to try to make diversity work in Richland. Awesome. Okay. Now the final question for you, the, my try 2030 regional vision project is a community driven effort to drive collaborative action. How do you see the cities collaborating, coming together to solve problems and advance regional initiatives? Um, hopefully, we'll continue to do what we're doing and also, you know, improve. Um, there are many collaborative agreements between the cities, both, you know, between each other, between the county, you know, between both the, the chamber and TRIDEC in order to um, leverage our collective force um, together, um, whether it be to attract larger um, funding opportunities to the area so that we can install and build infrastructure that you know we cannot afford um, by ourselves. Um, also, we have collaborative groups in um, a lot of different areas such as transportation, such as um, parks and recreation, um utilities i mean we we work together on a daily basis with with our community partners and we have to continue to do that and we have to find a way to um you know e basically evolve and get even better than we already are because there is such a competition for resources whether it is you know competing for linemen or paramedics or firefighters or uh, police officers or for competing for transportation dollars. The more that we can be unified in our approach, the more it benefits the citizens, not only in Richland, but also across the Tri-Cities um, in order to you know, achieve that bigger goal. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much. And this closes the question and answer period, and we will end the forum with Ms. Kent's closing statements. And Ms. Kent, you have one minute. Thank you, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. I truly hope that um, each person in Richland takes the opportunity to become educated and informed regarding what you want and expect from your city representatives. It's been my pleasure to serve you the, the last 12 years on city council, and I hope I have your vote to continue to do so for at least four more years. Thank you very much. All right, Sandra, thank you so much. We certainly appreciate you taking the time to be with us for the Tri-City Regional Chambers 2021 Candidate Forum. And as we begin the countdown to election day on November 2nd, please remind your friends in Richland to watch, share, and get out the vote. And you can find this video and our other candidate forum videos on the Tri-City Regional Chamber website. And that is www.tricityregionalchamber.com.